Sweet, the parts have arrived from Amazon and eBay and it's time to ditch the entire LS2 air filter intake system, including the mass airflow sensor and install this. Toys for life. In the last video, we analyzed the wide open throttle pressure testing we did of the LS2 powered C6. And we also analyzed each component of the LS2 air filter intake assembly and determined that the mass airflow sensor is in fact the weak link that is causing a one half pound per square inch pressure drop inside the LS2's intake manifold at wide open throttle. I went on to estimate how this restriction could be costing the LS2 powered C6 around 10 horsepower and how GM engineers made a couple of very important design changes to the LS3 and the LS7's improved air filter intake assembly. First, GM improved the overall shape of the air filter assembly, including a seal on the front edge, which helps it to draw in air from down lower within the C6 engine bay. This is an obvious improvement because cold air contains more oxygen, which means more horsepower. Second, GM ditched the old mass airflow sensor design, moving to a new card style mass airflow sensor so that the sensing elements are no longer imprisoned within the body of the 85 millimeter mass airflow sensor. This improved design greatly reduces the restriction, especially at the higher flow rates. So if you missed those videos, be sure to check them out, especially if you're the type of person that wants to know the technical details. The last video ended by me saying that parts have been ordered and they have since arrived. So let's check out each individual component. First up is a used C6 Z06 air filter assembly from eBay for $155. Then is a brand new mass airflow sensor from Amazon for $48. Then is an adapter cable from the LS2 style to the LS3 mass airflow sensor for 13 bucks. Finally is the accordion style connector that came with the C6 Z06 air filter assembly. Being as how this is a used air filter assembly, I fully expect to have to buy a new air filter element, but let's go ahead and take it apart and see what we have to work with. Interesting, we've got kind of a foam filter element, which is kind of sketchy, and an aluminum honeycomb, which its job is to kind of straighten out the air and smooth it out so that we don't get high speed, low RPM bucking from uneven airflow across the mass airflow sensor. But it's good enough to get this installed and mocked up inside the car and get it running with kind of a bass tune. <laughs> Well, it definitely sucks in some cooler air. It's got more flow potential and I think it looks a lot better. Now it's time to fire up the LS2, right? Well, not exactly. Unfortunately, it probably won't even run because the tables inside the tune that interpret the data coming from the LS3, LS7 style mass airflow sensor need to be adjusted by quite a bit. Even if the signals that come from the LS3, LS7 style mass airflow sensor were exactly the same as the ones coming from the LS2 style mass airflow sensor, we still would have to tweak the tune because we have changed the entire air filter assembly and that changes the way the engine breathes. So for both of those reasons, we definitely have to tweak the tune. Additionally, both the LS2 style and the LS3, LS7 style mass airflow sensors contain the intake air temperature sensor as well. So let's go ahead and jump into HP tuners right now. 
We'll change the math tables and the IAT tables just enough so we can get the car up and running and then we'll have to wait till we get the air filter so we can do some street tuning to really dial it in. All right, so we're in HP tuners. I'm gonna go ahead and open the tune that I've been using recently. Then I'm also gonna go ahead and open a compare file, which is the 2008 Z06 tune that I'm gonna get the math data from. Then we go into engine. And as you can see, here's the LS2 data. Here's the LS3 data. And it's literally like about three times more. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna paste it into the LS2 tune. So that's good. Then I'm also gonna go to the high part of the frequency scale. They just divide it into high and low. Don't ask me why. Again, the LS3 data is much higher than the LS2. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna paste that over to the LS2. Then I'm gonna close the compare file. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save it as something new here. Just name it whatever you want that uh, will make it clear what you did. And save that. Now, to make sure, I'm gonna close that out, that I did it right, I'm gonna go into the tune I just created. This time I'm going to compare it to that tune that I got the Z06 math data. And these should be non-highlighted. So this is highlighted, this is different. But now this means that I changed everything correctly, otherwise one or both of these would be highlighted. So I'm satisfied that I did this correctly. So now we've got the mass airflow sensor data in the tune close enough to get it up and running. Next, let's take a look at the intake air temperature sensor data inside the tune so that we can get that dialed back in. The intake air temperature sensor data is a bit trickier to adjust because the resistance breakpoints within the tune, which is the top row, they don't line up exactly between the LS2 tune and the LS3, LS7 tune. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of math and some deductive reasoning to figure it out, but I promise you, it's doable. And by the way, if you happen to be an advanced tuner and you're watching this and you know of a way to change those resistance breakpoints in the tune, let me know in the comments below. I'd be most appreciative because I don't think it's possible. All right, so for the inlet air temperature table, I've got both tunes once again opened in HP Tuner. So here's my LS2 tune, and here is the 2008 LS7 tune from the Z06 that we're gonna kind of take the data from. And what I did is, here's the LS2 tune. I just copied this entire table, and I pasted it right here into Microsoft Excel, you can use probably a different spreadsheet, whatever you have. And then I formatted a little bit, so I've got all the LS2 data right here, the resistance, which is the fixed column headers here, and the temperature, which we can change any one of these cells if we want to, that's the part we can tune. So here it is for the LS2, went back into the tune, click this for the LS7's data, same thing, copy this, and I paste that right here, okay? So here is all the LS7 data. All right, so for as an example, this is what I've created here, which is my LS2 to LS3 table. And for 154 ohms, what value would I plug in here? Well, if I go to the LS7 table, 154 is gonna be somewhere in between here. So what I did is I just simply created another column and I took, and this is called interpolation, you might remember it from, from math class, 154 plus 186 divided by two is 165. And same thing here for the temperature, 230 plus 212 divided by two is 221. So, and what I'm trying to do is figure out what value would I plug in here for the temperature for 154 ohms. I believe this is ohms. What would I use? Well, it's obviously right in between here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use 225 degrees. And I essentially just repeated that for every one of these. As you can see, when I unhide this, I spent a fair amount of time going through here and, and essentially for each one of these in my custom tune, figuring out by interpolation and some deductive reasoning what value would be plugged in here. As a final quality check, you just want to make sure 
as you go across here that the numbers are dropping. If one of them was to pop up, then you would know you did something wrong. All the way to the end. Okay, so now I have my custom table right where I want it. I've done all my interpolations. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to grab all of this data right here. Copy. You can absolutely do this. And I'm going to shut this compare file down so I don't get it mixed up. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to paste my new data right in here. And as you can see, there it is. And I'll do the same thing for IA2 sensor calibration. And I think this is like a second sensor. If you had like a supercharged application or something, you want uh, the air temperature before the supercharger and after the supercharger. I don't think it has any use in naturally aspirated because every tune I've looked at, these are both identical. But to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to paste the exact same data in here. And we're good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And I've actually already done it. Um, Tune 13 plus Excel intake air temperature data one and two. And of course, the next part is to upload the tune to the C6's PCM. And once that's done writing, we'll go ahead and fire it up. Guys, I'll be watching the intake air temps. The oxygen sensors should be fluctuating above and below 450 millivolts to make sure that everything is happy. In other words, everything is at Stoich at part throttle operation. Guys, that's it for this one. Please hit that like below if you made it this far and stay tuned for part two coming soon.